This is Peter. You're watching the HTP YouTube channel. This is the Independence 210 ACDC. Today we're talking about AC welding on aluminum. And we're going to touch down on different waveforms, on pulse, and on ACDC mix. So stay tuned, enjoy the show. We'll start at the mode button. 2T pedal slider, confirm that selection. Then we're going to go here to the process button. AC, standard. And you have three waveforms to pick, a square wave, a soft wave or sine wave, and a triangular wave. The square wave is the most powerful, the soft wave is the quietest, the triangle wave is fast freezing, thin material preferably. So we're going to pick the square wave being your standard on a lot of machines, easy to control, and we're going to pick high frequency start with a pedal. Right now our pedal is set to 210 amp maximum output. We're going to reduce this a little bit. We're welding on some pretty thin coupons. And our starting amperage is at 15. We're going to lower this to 5 amps. So now we're 5 amps starting, 160 amp max pedal. We have a gas preflow of 0 0.2, no slope down, a gas post flow of 7.5, our balance is at 75% electrode negative. Electrode negative here is your penetration. See, there your penetration goes away. And your cleaning, the red electrode positive, is increasing. 75 electrode negative penetration. This is your EP base. This is your asymmetric arc. So you can limit the intensity of your cleaning right here. We're going to stay at regular 100%, no asymmetric arc. And we're going to weld this with 40 hertz. Why? Because I like doing this. It gives me a nice white puddle. And it also helps me with additional power input on thicker material later. Hot start tungsten diameter. We are good to go. So as you can see here, if you paid attention, I did not wipe down my rod, I did not acetone wash my coupons, I did not wire brush them. You can tell the, the rolling marks on here and there was like oil on here from the forming process of the metal. And that oil sucked all the way to the top and created the peppering in here. So either I have to clean my material or I have to decrease my EN, my penetration, and increase my EP, my cleaning, to deal with some of that oil and surface contaminants I have here. This was just not a stellar weld. So same material out of the same bin, same filler rod. Still, I didn't learn my lesson. I didn't clean anything. What I did is I took it from 75% penetration, electrode negative, to 65 so that effectively increased my cleaning by 10 percent points. We'll see how that will do. Okay, let me find excuses now. When I started to weld here and I scooted forward, and then you see how I had this, how I had this cable like under my 
wrist and I dipped it in twice because I couldn't move it because you're not supposed to do this because that's not good for the electrical current messing with the iron in your blood and putting yourself into that electric field. But when I do this, then all of a sudden, my weld turned out all right. So you can either be healthy or you can have nice welds. This shows you how a small adjustment, just a little bit balanced, all the other parameters were the same, same amperage, same gas, same thing, same tungsten, same filler rod, same material, nothing wiped clean, nothing, nothing else has changed, just a little bit balanced change goes from a real dirty and uncontrolled weld to a nice stack of dime weld with nothing floating in the puddle. So that's just, you have to dial your tick machine in the correct way. So speaking of that, now we're gonna try to do some pulse welding for some thinner aluminum material, just like this, and see if we can reduce the heat input by pulse welding. Our process is still AC. We go into pulse. In the interest of keeping everything apples to apples, we're gonna keep the square wave, which I would normally change to reduce heat input a little bit through the waveform as well. But I wanna have the direct comparison to square wave versus square wave, pulse versus no pulse. Now we go to our pulse settings. We're gonna go to we can do a high speed pulse at 20. Your eyes can recognize that. It's stressful on my eyes. I'm gonna bring this down to like two and a half pulses per second. Pulse on time 50%, background 50%. And we'll see how that works. All right, same tungsten, same material, same maximum pedal. Now with pulse, let's see how this controls the heat input. So my excuse was these sheets here didn't line up perfectly. There was a little bit of a gap in it. So it sucked some of that oil into here. You see a little bit peppering in here. Overall, relatively clean. The heat input is a little bit less than on those other ones. I wasn't able to really control my dips like I wanted to. Overall, not terrible. I call it a good commercial weld. We have full penetration on here. It's, it's good for what it is. Most of your landscape trailers and snowmobile trailers, you wish they would be welded that good. So now these are quarter inch coupons. How do you weld quarter inch with a 210 amp machine? If you only have argon, no helium. These small pieces though, you could preheat them, you'd probably be fine. If it was any bigger, it could be challenging. So we put an AC-DC mix feature on there. Your baseline is AC, three cycles of AC. Then there comes a cycle of DC only, and then three cycles of AC, a cycle of DC only. And what that does is it narrows your frost line it increases your penetration dramatically, so you can weld thicker material, material, and this 210 amp machine maybe feels like 250. It feels like you have helium without the added expense of helium. So let me show you how I set this up. Mix AC-DC, standard, square wave for maximum penetration, high frequency. We are going to 210 amps, Free flow, 
slope down, post flow. Here's our balance, 65. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna leave it at 65. Compare apples to apples. We weld at 65 all day, even with a little bit of contamination, no problem. Electrode, uh, the asymmetric arc, EP base, 100%, no asymmetric arc is selected. See, your cleaning is still up all the way to 100%. Frequency is at 40, just like we had it. And here's our DC amount. Right now, you can adjust this from 10% DC to 90% DC. With regular 100% argon, I feel that between 30 and 40% is about the most you want to do. Otherwise, you need to add helium or you need to change your balance to accommodate the longer DC section. Since we have the same balance and the same um, asymmetric arc, we're going to keep this at 40 and see how that does. So now you will hear a change in sound. You hear the three, three AC cycles, then it's quiet for a split second while the DC cycle is happening, and so on and so forth. So it could have used one more dab of filler at the end here, but I was kind of in a pickle. I didn't have enough rod to feed it in, and I couldn't re-grab it fast enough. Overall, it looks reasonably clean. A little bit of peppering on there. Again, nothing is clean. You can tell this is sheer cut. So that's not a clean cut anyways. There's oxides, there's oil on this plate. The frost line, very narrow, very good looking bead. And when you look at this, you have even full penetration here coming all the way through. Even here in the beginning, it's starting to come through. There's not much left for the root here. You're full penetrating through. And this is laying on an ice cold 5 8 plate of um, steel as a heat sink. That's not ideal. This should have been propped up on some TIG rod so it doesn't make contact with the bench. But this here is from a single side, an 80 or 90% weld. I mean, over here, it's 100. So I could grind this a little bit, or I can just, as deep as this penetrates, run another bead on the backside and see how that works out and see what we're gonna get there. course now that this is smoldering hot you don't see defined ripples anymore because this is all just way too hot and you can tell on the back side here where the crater wasn't filled it's filled now it pushed all the way through so that's how much power is in that little machine with the AC-DC mix that's a good tool to have in your toolbox for when you have to weld heavy aluminum and you don't have helium handy or you don't want to carry the burden the expense of the helium if you stuck around till now, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something about AC TIG welding aluminum. If the Independence 210 AC-DC is right for you, check it out on the website, follow us on social media, and give us a call if you have more questions. 847-357-0700. Thank you. Bye.